Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from sysadmin102. In today's video, I will show you how to set up VLAN on AppSense with an access point. And I will also go over the firewall and net rules to get you up and running. Uh, in this example, we're going to be creating a VLAN for a guest network. And we're going to create a firewall rule to isolate this from um, the entire LAN. So that's why uh, guest network only have uh, access to the internet, but not your internal network. And before we get started, we're going to talk a little bit about a requirement. So I will talk about the minimum uh, hardware requirement. So at the minimum, you have to have an absent router. Managed switch is a referred option. However, if you have an unmanaged switch, it should work as well. In this tutorial, I'll be using an unmanaged uh, PoE switch to power the unified uh, access point. And obviously, uh, the third hardware requirement is going to be the wired access point with uh, VLAN support. So some of the good choices are uh, Unify, uh, TP-Link Omada, or the Aruba Instant On. Uh, these access points require um, power over Ethernet. So most likely, you will have to connect it to a PoE switch. If your budgets allow, a managed uh, switch is referred. However, I understand a managed PoE switch, it depends on your budget, it can be expensive. So an unmanaged switch is a lot cheaper. And for uh, home use and home lab purposes, uh, that should work fine. An unmanaged switch still can carry the tag VLAN. Uh, the pro and con with it, uh, we try to avoid that. But again, for home use and uh, home lab, uh, should work perfectly fine. All right, that uh, concluded the hardware requirement. Next, we're going to head over to the AppSense dashboard. And uh, as of this tutorial, the current version is AppSense 25.1. Like always, I recommended that you make a backup by going to uh, System and Configuration and Backup and download a copy of your current configurations. So anything go wrong, you can uh, restore from the backup. And with that, let's get started with uh, step number one, which is uh, creating a VLAN. All right, so we would navigate to uh, interfaces, and then we will select devices, and then uh, we're going to select VLAN. And from here, we're going to select add to add a new VLAN. Devices, you can name it, uh, or if you leave it blank, AppSense will automatically uh, create a VLAN name for you. But uh, for this tutorial, we're going to call it VLAN 0 0.30. So we're going to tag um, VLAN 30. And then for the parent, you're going to select the whichever the interface that uh, the wireless access point is going to connect it to. Uh, if you only have uh, one interface that connected to the unmanaged switch, we're going to select LAN and VLAN priority. It by default is going to be uh, zero. If you want to know what all mean, means, uh, you head over to my Rinton tutorial, which the link going to be included down in the descriptions. And from there, I have a table that explain what all the uh, PCB value mean. If you uh, have a difficulty to decide which one you're going to select, uh, you can just leave at the, at the default, which is uh, no special reality. All right, let's head back to uh, the VLAN. All right, and for the descriptions, we're just going to call it uh, yes. All right, and once you've done that, we're going to zip it, and we're going to select apply. All right, next step, we're going to assign the VLAN to a new interface, and we're going to enable the DHCP server for that interface. So we're going to navigate to uh, interface, and assignment. And from here, we're going to select the interface that we just created, the VLAN 30. And we're going to select add. All right, and we're going to click on that the interface that we just created. And we're going to select enable interface. And for descriptions, we're going to make it a little bit more descriptive so it's easier to identify them. So I'm going to add it in uh, VLAN 30 underscore guess. For the IPv4 configurations, it's going to be a static IPv4. For this tutorial, we're going to keep it uh, as none. 
Uh, however, you have the option to to uh, whether you want to set static IP address or the XCPV6. And then for the IP address, so I got a lot of questions of uh, how you calculate the subnet. Uh, so typically, if you have a basic uh, knowledge about networking, you can figure out a subnet, or you can use like you know the popular subnet like 192.168.1.1. But uh, typically, I, but I'm not recommending to you the popular one. The problem with it, if you have uh, uh, open VPN or WireGuard servers, the common IP address can be a um, issue. Uh, they're not gonna able to route the traffic because uh, they have uh, there is IP conflict. So easier just to create a unique IPv4 address. You can use the IP subnet calculator. And from here, what you do is you would put in a 10 dot the network that you want to use, dot 3 dot 1. And from here, it, it can have a different subnet. So the typical subnet is slash 24, which is uh, 255.255.255.0. These, these are the most common one. And then it will tell you that the number of usable is 254 IP address. That's how much you need. Um, well, depend on your need. Uh, that might be enough for you, uh, which is most typical home use. Uh, sometimes you will need to, you know, limit the number of uh, usable IP address in the subnet, uh, and I'll go over that in an, another later tutorial. But just for example, if you go down to uh, subnet slash nineteen, that would give you uh, a lot more usable hosts. And likewise, if you go down to subnet, uh, for example, slash 29, that would give you less usable uh, IP address. So this is only six. All right, and let's go back to our um, interfaces. So IPv4, I'm gonna use 10.10.3.1, and it's gonna be uh, slash 24. All right, so, 254 should be more than enough for a guest network. All right, and we're gonna save it. And we're gonna select apply changes as well. Next, we're gonna enable the DXCP service on the VLAN 30 guest. So we're gonna navigate it through our services and then ISC DXCP v4. And then we we'll select uh, VLAN 30 and we're gonna select enable DXCP server and for the range we're gonna specify 10.10.3.2 .10 and we're gonna use the last one 10.10.3.254 and for the DNS servers you can specify a DNS server here for example 9.9.9.9 .9 .9 .9, that's the quad 9 DNS server and the other one gonna be 1.1.1.1 which is a loud flare uh, however, uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to reroute the DNS traffic to your local DNS server. So that's where you can take advantage of the uh, DNS over T uh, TOS or, you know, uh, DNS creep. All right, and we're going to go down and we're going to select set. And uh, next step, we're going to config uh, firewall rules for the VLAN. So we would navigate to uh, firewall. And uh, first, we're going to re an alias. So if you follow my tutorial before, you probably already have it. Uh, I re the uh, alias called RFC1918 underscore network. So these are including all the um, private subnet. So that way we can uh, isolate the guest network from all the private uh, network. So if you don't have one already re you can select add. And the name gonna be RFC nineteen eighteen underscore network, and then the tab it's gonna be a network, and the content it's gonna be one nine two dot one six a dot zero dot zero subnet sixteen, and then ten dot zero dot zero dot zero subnet eight, and one seventy two dot one six dot zero dot zero subnet uh, slash 12 so or you can uh, copy 
these from my uh, ringtone tutorial and you would paste it in there and then for the descriptions we're gonna call it rfc1918 underscore network and once you've done that we're gonna save it and next we're gonna create the firewall rules to allow uh, vlan30 access to the internet so we're gonna go to our rules and then we're gonna select VLAN 30 underscore guests. And from here, we're gonna select add to add a new rule. And for the TCP IP versions, uh, if you have IPv6 on your network, uh, you're gonna select IPv4 plus IPv6. If you only have IPv4, you can just look at the default IPv4. Um, and for the source, it's gonna be VLAN 30 uh, guest net. And for the destinations, we're going to select a destination inverse and for the destinations we're going to select the RFC 1918 alias that we just create so this would isolate the guest network from uh, all the rivet network uh, inside your network and for the descriptions we're going to say allow VLAN 30 guests access to the internet and when we done that we're going to select set and we're going to select apply changes Next, we can create a net rule to redirect all the DNS requests to your local DNS resolver. Keep in mind that if you decided to uh, specify the DNS server under the DXCP, then you will not need to uh, set up the net rules. The net rule is only for the one that want to uh, use the local DNS server to take the advantage of uh, DNS over TLS or DNS uh, crypt. So we can navigate to net. And then we're going to select a port 4. And from here, we're going to select add to add a new one. And the interface is going to be uh, VLAN 30. And TCP IP versions, we're going to use the default IPv4. Protocol is going to be uh, TCP or UDP. And for the destinations, it's going to be VLAN 30 guess nest. All right, and the destination port range is going to be uh, DNS to DNS. And the redirect target IP address is going to be the loopback IP, which is 127.0.0.1. And then the redirect target port is going to be DNS. However, if you have your DNS resolver, listen to a different port number, you would uh, select other and then you can uh, specify that port number for example like 5353 uh, otherwise you would leave as a dns which is the default port 53 and when we done that we're going to select set and we're going to select apply changes next step is to uh, config your managed switch for the vlan tagging uh, however, in the tutorial, I'm using an uh, unmanaged switch, so we're going to skip that step and we're going to go straight into creating a VLAN and setting up VLAN on the wireless access point. So for my wireless access point, I'm using the Unify um, wireless access point. So from the network, you're going to select uh, config and the network. And then from here, we're going to add a new virtual network. And we're going to call it uh, guess. And then VLAN ID, we're going to tag it to VLAN 30. Make sure whatever that you uh tagging in here, it's the same like the VLAN that we created earlier. All right, and we select add. All right, and we're going to go back to uh, Wi-Fi. And we're going to create the new network. So I'm going to call it sysadmin102 guess. And then you would create a password for it. And then down here for the network, we're going to specify the VLAN 30. We're going to tag the VLAN 30 in there. And from here, you can select manual or you can select auto. And you can change all the settings that are down here. All right. For the tutorial, I'm using uh, auto. And then we select add Wi-Fi network. Actually, I'm going to go back and... Uh, I'm going to change it to manual. And then for the security protocol, we're going to select uh, WPA2 or WPA3. 
So it's going to use WPA3 for divider capable, but if not, uh, we can use WPA2 for um, more compatible compatibility. All right. And typically when you create the new uh, network, it's going to take a little bit for Unify to um, provisioning that new network. Uh, for certain access point, yeah, most likely you have to restart it as well. All right, next step, we're going to make sure that the traffic get rerouted to the local DNS servers and as well as uh, the VLAN for the guest network doesn't have access to our local network. So first, we're going to switch the Wi-Fi to the new guest SSID that we just created. All right, and I'm going to open up uh, terminal. And from here, we can using the ns lookup command. All right, and it telling us that it using the local DNS server. Uh, you can run uh, another command. We're gonna use uh, the scu2 and then uh, hyphen hyphen DNS. They're gonna show it that it using the local DNS server as well and then to test to see if it, it have connection to our local server we're gonna use a ping and then we're gonna ping a 10.10.3.1 if you got the request time out that means that you successfully isolated the guest network from your local network because it's not reachable and then one more thing we're gonna do a DNS uh, leak test uh, that's what it's going to tell us that it actually using the DNS that we set it up uh, on our local DNS server. So for my, I set it up with the next DNS. So when we do a DNS leak test, you should get the next DNS uh, DNS server. And the DNS leak test confirmed that it's using the next DNS server. And that concluded today's video. If you think the video is helpful, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.